All right, we're live. So before this video properly begins, I need to check something. Uh. Okay. So this is attempt number what five, and there's five hours of like wasted footage because YouTube is screwing me over royally. And I'm really mad, I need this up by tonight, so the only way I can do this is making it way shorter than the original. So I'm sorry, but this is my... the only way I can do it. Uh, I'll just give you the quickest version possible. Uh, this is my top 10 favorite movies of 2018, which is ranking all 50 movies I saw this year. Movies that I was interested in, but hadn't seen. Molly's Game, 8th Grade, Tully, Deadpool 2, Mom and Dad, The Death of Stone, Terminal, American Animals, Hotel Armist, Tag, Leave No Trace, Sorry to Brother You, Black Klansman, Mandy, The Sisters, Brothers, A Star is Born, Bad Times at the El Royale, Mid-90s, Wildlife, Bohemian, Rhapsody, The Front Runner, Overlord, Widows, Creed 2, The Favorite, Vox Lux, Moral Engines, The M Mule, Aquaman, Bumblebee, Vice, and Destroyer. Those are all the movies I'm interested in, but haven't seen. I haven't seen everything this year. If a movie you like isn't in any of these areas, it's because I didn't watch it. Either because I'm not interested in it, or because I got interested in it, but too late. Anyways, here we go. I'm going to give you the super quick version. That isn't three hours like every time, so I'm sorry if I'm angry, but I am, so... This is the only way to do it. Today's been one of the most stressful days of my life, and it's very infuriating. So let's just go. Number 50, the worst movie I saw this year was Game Over the Man. On paper, a couple of jokes were probably good, but it failed as an action and a comedy. Number 49 is The Open House. Everyone hates this movie, it seems, but at least the ending is different and ballsy. So, and number 48 is A Prayer Before Dawn. Boring. Uh, number 47 is Apostle. Second half was uber disappointing. Uh, I just felt like it was pointless suffering. Number 46, Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. This one is dumb. It, uh, the characters are inconsistent. The twist is <laughs> dumb. All right, number 45, six balloons. It's fine, but it, the pacing is awful. It drags. Number 44 is like father. It's just okay. It, it, the two leads are good. Number 43 is extinction. The action is fine. The twist is okay. Michael Penn's not an action star, though. Number 42 is skyscraper. Die hard clone, but an okay one. Number 41, mute. Interesting visuals, interesting performance from Paul Rudd. Not much else. The story was okay. 40, gringo. It's not as bad as everyone says it is. I like the action, the humor, and how different and unexpected it was. Number 39, you are not really here. Failed to make me angry, which it was trying to do, so it failed. But at least has interesting visuals and stuff. 38, bird box, overrated somewhat boring in parts but it's entertaining in other parts 37 Roma boring but good uh, 36 is the outsider Jared Lowe fun but not a very good movie 35 is Mowgli Legend of the Jungle this one is, has awful special effects good thing that's not what makes a good movie I found it more entertaining than the other two Jungle Book movies that Disney let out 34 is interesting it's a care, the kindergarten teacher which has a very good Maggie Gyllenhaal performance the kid's good I didn't know where it was going the ending was fascinating but big bulks of the movie are boring since it's a an extremely slow burn. 33 in mile 22. Saved by John Malkovich's fantastic line. If you don't know the one, then you hadn't seen it. <laughs> Number 32. How I talk to girls at parties. Very different, which is good. But it's, it's, it's different. So, a little too much for me. Number 31. Chappaquiddick. Really good, but uh, there's something about it that just seems... 
okay to me, even though I really liked it. I don't know how to describe it. Number 30 is Unsane. Very good Soderberg movie. Uh, well, I don't know about very good, but it's a good Soderberg movie. It's interesting. It's psychological thrillers. I mean, it's a psychological thriller. I like thrillers. Number 29 is Black Panther. This movie is very overrated. It's... The, the villains are good. Andy Serks is extremely good. He's hilarious. He relishes every moment he has on screen. Michael B. Jordan is an interesting bad guy. Number 28, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Watch my full review. Number 27, Tomb Raider. It's fine. I'm, I haven't played that much of the games or seen the Angelina Jolie movies, but it was fine. It was good. Uh, number 26, Rampage. It's fun. Number 25 is Hereditary because I didn't know whether to put it up because I loved it so much or down because religious reasons. Uh, so I just put it right in the middle. Number 24, Maze Runner, Death Cure. It's good. Uh, interestingly unpredictable, like who lives and dies. Number 23, Vanishing of Sydney Hall. I know it's pretentious, but I still liked it. I found it interesting. Number 22, Venom, surprisingly fun, comedic. Number 21, The Commuter, it's fun. It was a January movie, I don't remember that much. Number 20, Sicario Dave, The Soldado. It's better than I thought it would be. Uh, I like it more than the first one, actually, which is my least favorite Dennis Villeneuve movie. 19, Solo, my favorite Star Wars movie to date. Uh, and uh, my only complaint with it is the robot character. Number 18 is Hot Summer Nights, higher than I thought it would be, but I'm a sucker for crime drama thrillers. Number 17, then Crubbles 2. Surprisingly, I like it more than the first one, but that's a controversial opinion. Number 16, everyone despises, like, I mean despises, except for me, because I found it just overwhelmingly fun. Number 16 is the Chlorfield Paradox. Yeah, I know, boo me off stage, whatever. I've been putting this together for like 10 hours, and it's been causing multiple panic attacks and frustrations. Number 15 is Isle of Dogs. Wes Anderson is fantastic. Yay, I remembered his name this time. Uh, great animation, great performances, dark, but it's it's Wes Anderson. What, what more can I tell you? He's great. Number 14, Bad Samaritan. Went in knowing nothing about it, ended up loving it. Go in without knowing anything. It's, it's great. Stories, very interesting. And uh, the characters are pretty good. Number 13 wasn't on the list, and I didn't know where to put it, even though I would have put it higher on the list, like in the top five, if it counted. But since it doesn't technically count as a film, I had to disqualify and lower it. So it's Black Mirror, Bandersnatch. It's fun choice-based interactive movie. 12 is Searching. It's a really good mystery movie. Uh, number 11 is Ballad of Buster Scruggs. The first four storylines, fantastic. The last two drag on a bit. That's why it just barely missed top 10. Great performances, though. Number 10 is Ray Player One. I know that some people call it the Big Bang Theory of action films, but, I mean, it's like Smash Brothers, where, what other movie are you going to see Mecha Godzilla fight the Iron Giant? Number 9 is lower than what a lot of people would have thought I would have put, and everyone else puts it higher than me. Mission Impossible Fallout. Second Mission Impossible trilogy is probably one of the best trilogies out there. Ghost Pro Call is my first one, which I'm nostalgic blind for, and I love it to pieces. Rogue Nation, love it to pieces. Fallout, love it to pieces. Gray action set pieces. I gotta respect all the work that went into that one. Number eight, Thoroughbreds, which I know is a lot higher than some people would say. Some people said it lacks uh, diversity among its main two cast members who are too similar, their characters anyways, but I still loved it. I am a sucker for thrillers, like I said. I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was really funny, too. Speaking of really funny, number 7, Game Night. Also much higher than I thought it would be. But it's immensely fun. It's cleverly scripted. And the acting is great. And the visuals are surprisingly well done. And a lot of the just visuals are just brilliant. Number 6 is Ant-Man and the Wasp. 
Uh, it, it was a nice break from Infinity War. It paced out perfectly for sign after Infinity War. It was, it's the finest Marvel's ever been. Number five is Annihilation. Uh, brilliant sci-fi, wonderful art house, great performances, great visuals, great writing, directing, just good job all around the board. Number four is A Quiet Place packed into 90 minutes especially the over half the film which is the second half is uh just holding your breath which is brilliant and i loved it uh number three is avengers infinity war maybe it should be lower but when i watched it i was like holy crap this is real and that's enough for me uh number two is spider-man into the spider-verse uh, you can just look at my review once again. Number one is First Reformed, which I consider to be a perfect film despite one flaw, which is knowing that the writer-director is older, let's just say. A couple of lines of dialogue in this one conversation that are between characters in their 40s, I think, seemed more like it was written by a guy in his 80s which it was but you only really notice that if you know the writer director is uh paul schrader who did um taxi driver he wrote it anyways that's the 12 minute version instead of the hour 10 minute 70 minute version so yeah i'm gonna condense this down and upload now because i wanted to get it done today since it's new year's eve and it's the last day of 2018 and i really want to get it up tonight so sorry if i seem really angry or exasperated that's just how i feel so much footage was wasted you know what i'm not even gonna edit this down i'm just gonna upload it because screw it right so why not i hope you guys enjoyed sorry if i sound ill that's how I feel. See ya.